Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. As promised, today I want to introduce you to the NCCI edits. Now NCCI stands for National Correct Coding Initiative. And guys, the whole purpose of the National Correct Coding um, Initiatives is to control improper coding leading to improper or inappropriate payment. If I had to put it in my own terms as far as what NCCI stands for, I think the best way that I can describe it is to say that because I'm not a surgeon and because a lot of surgeries or procedures are still kind of new to me, I don't know what includes what. When I'm looking in my CPT book and I'm looking at procedures, for a basic example, is um, an appendectomy. Well, with an appendectomy, they're removing the appendix. It's understood that they're either, you know, cutting open, removing the appendix, and stitching it back up. So there's no use in me coding a laparotomy, which means to cut open, and then, in addition, code the appendectomy because it's understood in order to do an appendectomy, a laparotomy, or to cut open the abdomen is a part of appendectomy. So you'd be double coding to code the laparotomy and the appendectomy, just code one. So procedures like that, and then when it gets way advanced into a lot of these orthopedic surgeries or these even OBGYN surgeries, I get a little confused and I don't know, as I'm coding multiple things that are being done, when does one actually encompass the other? Even to the point with laceration repairs, when they're doing... Um, debridements and then lacerations I get confused when is do I need to code both the debridement and the laceration repair or do I even code both and does one the NCCI edits help me I can go to that table the NCCI table and put the procedure code in and then any additional CPT codes that I would want to put with that procedure code and it will let me know whether or not one includes the other or whether or not I can code the two together because a lot of times you're not supposed to code the two together or there are times when you can code the two together as long as you have the appropriate modifier identifying the reasoning or the purpose behind why you need to code the two procedures so in looking at the NCCI tables as I promised you you're gonna learn that you have two columns column one and column two Column 1 code, as far as the relationship, is not um, true for many edits. For example, simply, it represents two codes that should not be reported together unless an appropriate modifier is used. So many procedure codes should not be reported together because they are mutually exclusive of each other. And when I say mutually exclusive procedures, they cannot be reasonably performed at the same anatomic site or um, same beneficiary encounter. An example of a mutually exclusive situation is a repair of an organ that can be performed two different ways. You can't code the two different methods. Um, hysterectomy. They now can do a laparoscopic hysterectomy where they use the robot and it goes in through um, little holes in your stomach or they can actually cut you open and do the hysterectomy or do it endoscopically well you can't code two of the same procedures just different methods to do it on the same person on the same encounter um, another example is if a service that can be reported as an initial service or a subsequent service. It's either initial or it's subsequent, but it's not both on the same day for the same patient. So, when is a code reimbursable with the code pair? A column one and a column two, and I'm gonna show you what columns I'm referring to. There's a column one, column two table and it, compro it comprises the procedure to procedure, PTP, procedure to procedure, code pairs. And if a provider submits the two codes of an edit pair 
for payment for the same beneficiary on the same date of service, the column 1 code is eligible for payment and the column 2 code gets denied. However, if both codes are clinically appropriate and an appropriate NCCI associated modifier is used, the codes in both columns are eligible for payment, but supporting documentation must be in the beneficiary's medical records. So let me show you how to go about finding this NCCI table. All right, from your CMS website, let me show you. All right, so from the same CMS.gov website that we worked on last week, I was able to pull up the nationally correct coding initiatives. And from these nationally correct coding initiatives, right here on the side is a PTP code edit. See that? PTP coding edits. Now if you will click on that, and I'm trying to go between two and three different monitors, it will bring you to a place where you have to accept the licensure for use of current procedural terminology fourth edition I'm under the Medicare NCCI edits so when I go down to the bottom and I accept the disclaimers and everything then it will bring me to a zip file and the zip file let me enlarge this so you all can see that takes you into and I chose it took me to a zip file that had and I could choose what number so I just chose the 5000 series in CPT so first of all I need you to understand the main goal here is to see the table this is what your table looks like and notice you have column 1 Volume 2, see the numbers right there, and on. So, understand what I'm saying here. Column 1 indicates the payable code, so that 5000 or 50010. Column 2 contains the code that is not payable with that or this particular Column 1 code unless a modifier is permitted and submitted. So if I go down this table on 5001, all of these codes are not, these are not assessed, you're not supposed to code these along with the column one code unless you have a modifier. So this is column one. And it's the same code. I and mean, what they will do is list every single code that is not to be paired with it unless, let me explain, so that's column 1, column 2, column 3, the third column indicates if the edit was in existence prior to 1996. Now notice on this table there is nothing there so it was not available prior to 1996. Column 4, the fourth column indicates the effective dates of the edit, the year, the month, and the date. So if I go down column 4, it's saying in 2010, July 1st of 2010, is when this code became into effect, or this edit. Okay. The fifth column indicates the deletion date of the edit. Month, date, and year. Year. And notice on the fifth, deletion date, it says deletion date. So none of these have one. So these are still in existence. The sixth column indicates if a modifier is permitted. This number is the modifier indicator for the edit. So the modifier indicator table is right modifier. 
Zero means not allowed, one means allowed, and nine is not applicable. Okay? So most of these have one, so that means it's allowed, but you're going to need an, a modifier to justify using the column one code and the column two code. So you're going to need, it's allowed, but you need a modifier. And the seventh column provides the underlying basis for each procedure to procedure edit. There you go. That's the rationale. PTP edit rationale. Okay. I'm trying to see that full table. So how do you know when an appropriate modifier may be used? Modifiers may be appended to a HCPCS CPT code only if the clinical circumstances justify the use of the modifier. A modifier should not be appended to a HCPCS CPT code solely on the basis or to bypass a PTP code pair edit. So, looking at these modifiers, zero there are no modifiers associated with the NCCI that are allowed to be used with this PTP procedure to procedure code pair there are no circumstances in which both procedures of the procedure to procedure code should be paired for the same beneficiary on the same day by the same provider. Now a 1 means the modifier associated with the NCCI are allowed with the procedure to procedure code pair when appropriate. So in this case it is allowed when it's appropriate. And a 9 means this indicator um, as far as this indicator is concerned means that an NCCI edit does not apply to this PTP or procedure to procedure code pair. The edit for this procedure to procedure code pair was deleted retroactively. So again, just spend some time and you'll notice it's going down. From They started from the 50010 code and guys, it goes down to every single code for 50010. And notice it's in numerical order going down. It's in the sixes. What codes can be used? Oops, this one has a deletion date. Some of them do, quite a few do. And notice the modifier code zero, nine, one. So I'd say if with, for example, code five zero zero one zero may be used with nine three zero four zero. It came into effect January fourth of two thousand nine, and a modifier must be used with it. So see how I can look at two CPT codes and determine that? And it just goes on and on. And see the code has already changed from 50010 to 50020. And it's telling me what codes are can be used with, with the modifier. So just spend some time on the NCCI table because it will definitely help you not to double, I can, it's just like double coding. You're putting two procedures together that, that should not be put together. And just spend some time on the NCCI edit table. A lot of um, software has these edits built in, but in case you don't have that luxury, just use the tables. They're there on the CMS website. Okay, guys? All right. If you haven't viewed my previous videos as we're building our coders toolbox, we started with the ICD-10 CM coding guidelines, went to the CPT coding guidelines. We're now talking about the NCCI and I want to talk about my, in my next video, MUEs, MUEs. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one.